Great news, everyone. I tried generating music with AI today, and as of April 2024, I'm still better at music than the AI. I went to try out Suno, I put in some uplifting lyrics and typed screaming a cappella, no instruments, screaming vocals for the style prompt, which gave me this result. Oh. as well as this result. This did not make me even a little bit uncomfortable. I also tried typing in dark industrial experimental, which got this result. Okay, this one actually did make me uncomfortable. This one sounds kind of creative, much less clean than I expected. I expected to get a more cliche result than this. After playing with this music generation stuff a bit, I have a few predictions I'd like to share just for fun. First of all, I predict that as it becomes easier to generate convincing music, people will start finding ways to make music that sounds like an AI could not have generated it by using musical memes and style choices that are brand new and were definitely unavailable in any of the training models that the AI learned from. Just as using internet slang is a good way to prove you're human when you're communicating with text, rapidly evolving musical memes will become important indicators of an artist's relatability. An example of such a meme could be alternating between super in-tune, auto-tuned vocals and super out-of-tune vocals like this. Who you are, you are. I don't think an AI would think to do that because there wouldn't be any instances of any artists doing that in its training set. Another example would be arbitrary tempo changes for just a few measures at a time. It's kind of sad to imagine music being whittled down to people just trying to prove that they are people. But I don't think it's going to be that simple. Instead, I think Live in-person music events will become even more important to people than they are now, and you'll see a decrease in the use of backing tracks when bands play live. And it's not because there's anything wrong with using tracks, it's just that people will be hungrier for the empty space, the sound of wonkiness and mistakes and finger noise, and playing a little at a time. It'll just be appealing in stark contrast to the sleek, algorithmically incestual music being generated constantly. Another way I want to predict how music is going to change is to look at how YouTube has changed. As a YouTuber, I am part AI because I'm always operating in collaboration, service, or opposition to the YouTube algorithm. When I make a sleek thumbnail and title combo, I let the algorithm take priority over my own instincts sometimes, and then eventually my instincts have just sort of become shaped by the algorithm, so I actually like this stuff. If I ever choose to rebel against the algorithm like I did last year when I made my 30 minute short film about an onion called Liminal Onion, I'm still making choices with the algorithm in mind. Doing the opposite of what the algorithm encourages isn't that different than following the rules. You're still just thinking about it constantly. And if you look broadly at YouTube, you're going to see a lot of humans mimicking and then becoming one with an AI's idea of what's good. The algorithm does reflect what people like, but it measures what they like in terms of watch time and doesn't have a really meaningful way to measure satisfaction. So it accentuates the value of watch time, which then accentuates how much we value watch time. We expect YouTube videos to move at a certain pace. 
So if algorithmic curation influences us to value watch time, what will AI-generated music influence us to value? I think a lot of people will generate a lot of music that fits perfectly into specific genres because the various music generation apps will ask for genre prompts. You might find new genres that are built around this level of specificity where entire artist communities share a few prompt combinations as a basis for what they do, sort of like how Vocaloid is an entire genre built around one VST that creates artificial voices. It's the software I use for the singing in my Sweetie Cuties. I want feet to stay close to me Just a kiss So in defiance of that, people might develop a deeper appreciation for artists who transcend genre or are hard to pin down. I've been thinking about the use of machine learning in art for a while now, just like everyone else, and I've been hesitant to share any actual opinions or thoughts about it on here because my opinion's changing all the time, just as much as the technology's changing. And I don't want to make a video where I say something one week and then I strongly disagree with it the next week. But my perspective at the moment is kind of simple. I don't really like using AI to generate art or music, but I like it when the technology is built into software that makes it easier for me to make my own art. But I do think it's possible to use AI to totally generate art from scratch in an actually deep creative way. For example, Images AI on Twitter posted a series of images called Most Normal Street in Ohio, in which they showed a collection of the AI model's impression of the most normal street in Ohio. The results truly feel like a summation of a greater truth about Ohio and many parts of the USA in general. They simply curated this collection with that prompt and by doing so said something meaningful about the way we perceive Ohio and the way that the AI reflects that perception. I think it's important for the companies that make these image and music generation training models to get permission from the artists whose work they use as training data. Or perhaps there could be a tagging system so that artists get a royalty whenever their data is used. Either way, as long as people need to make money in order to live, we need to be compensated and supported for our contributions to society. AI technology is so well funded and all these governments care about it, so it's here to stay. And I want artists to be involved in its development. I want us to know about this stuff. If all of us stay away from it like it's a disease, we'll have to put all of our faith in tech and military organizations to think of what to do with it. But as far as AI art and music go, what I really don't like is when people use other artists' voices in their music without their permission. Or, or even worse, when people use a dead person's voice in their music. That feels like defiling someone's grave or something. It, it just doesn't seem right. Part of being an artist is following these technological trends and adapting to them. Just like composers write really differently in a DAW than they write on a musical score. You have to wonder, all right, if, if AI is the next DAW, what would I actually want to do with it? What would the ideal tool be for me? I would want the AI to help me make sounds I could never, ever make on my own. For example, the sound of someone in a refrigerator being dropped from the top of an auditorium into a swimming pool full of goats, and the goats are not harmed. In fact, once the, once the refrigerator hits the goats, they just start singing a giant chord, but perfectly as goats. You know, it sounds like goats singing, and it really sounds like someone's in a refrigerator, and the splash and everything is just so realistic. That would be an awesome thing to generate. As long as we're making music the old-fashioned way, you might want to go to benlevinmusicschool.com and check out my courses, Making Music for Yourself, Getrongus, and Getting Songs Done, which are all on sale for the spring.